Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Hey, Welcome back to the channel. Today we are back with yet another episode of the Talk of Tokyo podcast. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, Amen. We say it all the time. What a time to be an anime fan. But in this case, what a time to be a subscriber of this channel, too. Shout out to you. We got Anime Soul King on. Yo, what's good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Make sure y'all go follow him on TikTok, man. He be dropping bangers. And everywhere Dr. else, too. Bangers. Oh, heck yeah. yeah. Appreciate the love. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, hey, man, just in general, you know, anime was really, really amazing. Especially last year. You know, 2023 was fantastic. I mean, wow, there were so many animes that just went crazy. But just in general, I was reminiscing about Vinland and how peak season two was and then I remember what Katil did and it kind of ruined my day if you know you know but oh, man. so I, I don't Arn know oh well it, it was bad but all in all Arnie's death hit me really really hard especially considering how amazing Vinland Saga executed her send off so just in general it was one of the things in 2023 that broke my soul. But with that being said, what are some anime moments that broke you? Ooh, man. Off rip? Off rip? I would have to say Gara's death from Naruto. Like, even though he came back to life, I'm not going to lie. Like, maybe it's because how early Naruto was in my crusade. But Naruto's reaction really sold it for me. That shit really hurt. Like... Oh man, that shit was crazy. Yeah, like Gara's death. Okay, so for me, I wouldn't say it broke me just because of how fast I was binging Naruto. Like he got brought back to life. Like I saw his death and I saw him get brought back to life the same day type shit. Like yeah. it was literally I was watching it so fast that I wouldn't necessarily say it broke me just because I already saw him get brought back to life. Like it was quick. Like, I'm just sitting there binging the shit all like, day. Like, I don't necessarily mean long-term either. Yeah, yeah, like, okay. Like, that. It, it was definitely sad in the moment. And especially, like, because Gara at that point, like, he was a he was just cool to me at that point because it was after the tuning exams. So, the death itself isn't the seller. It was, as you said, Naruto's reaction. Yeah, It's kind of yeah. similar to... Ace and how that happened, like obviously that's we all love Ace. One. We all love Ace, but Luffy's reaction sold that bitch. Oh, facts. His his overall like the emotion that was shown in his face is what mm -hmm. made that more meaningful. Yeah, that's it's, it's the same as uh, Naruto. Like Naruto's reaction and what he was saying to Granny Chio and everything, that for sure broke me. Like the the conversation he had with Granny Chio afterwards, like yeah, Gara this is all your fault. Him. Yeah, like that that was like, mm, yeah, that that's definitely a good one. Um, but Ooh. also, uh, you know, what I'm saying Ace since we're since I brought it up, you know, what I'm saying Ace is deaf. Like me personally, I love Ace, but we didn't see enough of him to where just him dying would have broken me. You know what I mean? Yeah, like. It was sad that it happened, but we only saw Ace in, like, three or four episodes up to that point. So, it was, like, the attachment wasn't to where just the death is what was killer. It was when Luffy reacted to it, because we, we've been following Luffy for 500 episodes at this point. Like, Luffy is him, yeah. dog. So, yeah, his, like, his reaction, the way he screamed, and then especially after Marine Ford, when he woke up on Amazon Lily, that broke the shit out of me. When he woke up and Jinbei had to console him, like, you still have yeah, your friends and everything. Like, like, just in general, that's our boy Luffy. Like, that shit definitely hurt, especially when you want to talk about Luffy's reaction itself. Even Ace's death, like, like you said, I wouldn't say I was necessarily that attached to Ace, just because we only got him for a few episodes in Alabasta, but... At the same time, all in all, when it happened in the moment and just knowing how hard Luffy worked to get to that point, oh, man, that shit was crazy. Like, maybe I was a little delusional, but I really thought Ace was going to get away in the moment. Like, 
When it happened, that uh, shit definitely hurt. Oh, man. When, the fact that that whole war happened, I had a sneaky suspicion something bad was going to happen. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know exactly what I but I had a very sneaky suspicion. And so what, when it happened to Ace, I was like, damn. That's, uh, that's tough, man. Like, damn, he just... Luffy, tried, Luffy went to go save his big brother to only see his big brother right in front of him. Yeah. I was like, that's that's traumatizing. And yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it definitely had a traumatizing of, like, effect on Luffy mentally, um, but also it was a motivational factor for Luffy. Um, 100%. Yeah, it's just that feeling of like I don't want anyone else to die in front of me like that that I care about. Like that's all the motivation he needed to go crazy. Shit. Well, another one like this one was a little bit different, but I almost wanted to jump through the screen. Like this scene in general just had me going crazy. I had to tell this nigga about it the next day because it was just like, wow, man, that was crazy. Like. And it didn't help how late I was watching it, let alone I had my dog next to me. Oh, man. But another one I would have to say is from Elf and Lee, the dog scene. Like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that shit was tragic. Bro, it's something about anime dogs getting hurt or worse that's just, I mean, dogs in general, like, dogs in general getting hurt or let alone anything else that happens to them is always bad, but like, nah, definitely, man. that elf and lead scene, like that was just pure rage that I felt in that oh, moment. Bro. I was so fucking mad. Like, like I was watching that shit. My dog, my dog sits like, cause at the time I would watch, uh, anime and stuff on my big TV outside of my room. And my dog would be like on the stairs looking down at me. So I'm watching this oh. scene, and then I look up at her. She's looking down at me, bro. I was like, oh, my God. There's no way. <laughs> oh, man. That's, oh, my goodness. That, the thoughts that just went through my head. <laughs> yeah, like. Hey, we say it all the time when we bring up Elf and Lee. Only watch it if you can handle it. That scene oh, is one of them. I would say, yeah. like, I kind of have a. I, I kind of have a, uh, I've seen the, like a, like a lot of like folks do like a lot of insane things like Orochi Maru do some insane things. Like, yeah. Do some things. So like that it it it, it 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 it's sad because of the fact I like I love dogs I grew up with dogs my entire life so it's sad but I'm like I've seen the worst but when I see when I see my pet my 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 um essentially. My right hand, right hand man here in front of me. I'm like, uh, yeah, this is this is effed up. Mm. Yeah, like it's different when you because you're watching the scene about a dog getting, you know, what I'm saying what happened, and then you look and see uh, your dog. It's like, oh, I wish, I wish a nigga would. I wish a nigga would. You know, I, I thought you were gonna, I thought you were gonna bring up the. uh Full metal dog scene. Oh, yeah, you can say that's another one. That one broke me for sure. Cause yeah. oh man, well, like neither the dog moment. nor Nina deserved that. Yeah, that's that's the f that moment. That's he's the most. I can't stand that, that character, man. Cause he's like you child to your own child. You turn your child into a dog. Yeah. For the uh, sake of science. And then he, hit, she hit the father. I was like, oh, oh, my heart. That that one was bad. That one was bad for sure. Especially because like, Full Metal Alchemist in general. That was so early into it. Yeah. No. Like. Yeah. yeah. That was like episode Another, four. Yeah, about episode four. I think so. Either four or five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. That's a that's a goaded series, um, for sure. Um, one death that you know made me extremely sad. Um, one because I'm a fan of this character, and then just 
and just to look back and see all the values he taught his students, Asuma. When Asuma died, that broke my heart. I'm like, yeah. yo. I'm like, how can y'all do this to Sikamaru? Choji, you know, I'm like, Like, it's crazy because, like, that... Asuma is the last person I thought would die. Yeah. I wouldn't say last person, but I didn't expect him to die at all. So, it like, when it happened... Yeah, yeah, it was random as shit. I was like, what the fuck? Like, there's no way they just killed him off like that. Like, he got... Like, I saw him get stabbed or whatever the fuck, and I'm thinking, like, oh, okay, uh, maybe he's gonna be hospitalized. Nah, he died. I was like, oh... Yeah, like, I'm not gonna lie, that fight in general was just wicked, and I didn't really, like, I still have mixed feelings on Asuma's death. He's among the characters in Naruto that I feel like didn't need to die for the story to keep moving, Mm -hmm. but I would definitely say his moment, or his death definitely was one of them. Oh, I, I agree with his, like, his death definitely, it, it, it played an impact. But I, and I think, looking back at it, I have to say I think him dying essentially really like it developed Shikamaru. Yeah. The team. Like that's his death was needed for that moment. Looking back at it as as a as a creator. Yeah. Shikamaru, you know, and Choji, you know, who not only was just mature as individuals and as a team. But um, I think that brought them even closer together than what they already than what they already um, were. Plus, you know, oh man, he left the daughter behind. That's what that's what's sad to me. He, he left the daughter behind. Yeah. Man. Yeah. That, yeah. I was like, oh man, you know. Speaking of leaving the daughter behind. Uh, this one's a little different than leaving a daughter, per se, but we just watched it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you've seen Firefighter Daigo, but you should watch it if you haven't. But we just watched the episode where uh, they went on a rescue mission and they had to save two people from a car that was sinking, like in a sinkhole. And oh, they man. got one passenger out and the other one died. The passenger that died was pregnant with twins. And before the one of the more recent episodes, we thought the twins were dead too. It turns out they they were able to save the twins, but the mother died. Like before we got that reveal that the kids were still alive, that broke the shit out of me to the point where I was wondering. We were both wondering how the main characters would yeah. respond to that, like. Because I don't know how I would have responded to that. Nah, yeah, like, especially, like, you know, first things first, shout out to Fire Fire Daigo. But I'm not going to lie, like, that was the first time that show really took that kind of turn. Like, it wasn't something I was really expecting. And it felt kind of real watching, but also just really gloomy. Like, I would definitely agree. That moment was just really tragic. Yeah, and we, until we got the reveal. Until we got the reveal, and it's still tragic because the mother died. But yeah, it's a, it's like a little bit of weight lifted a little bit when we realized the kids survived. I'm about to check it out. I'm now invested. Oh, no, it's a great anime. It's a great anime. Still ongoing too. Yeah, right. another one uh, from Link Click. Another anime, I don't know if you've seen. I don't know if you've seen Link Click, but I don't even, like, I don't even know if I should say this one, because I feel like it's, like, a crazy spoiler. Mm-hmm. Mm. You talking about the end of season two? Yeah. Low-key, I have that I'm one. Not... I was thinking about it. I don't, like, like, should, I don't know if we should say that one, Low-key. If you plan on watching Link Click, I would just say, like, definitely check that out. De- just the, yeah. the anime. Definitely okay. check out Link Click. Okay. I'm going to uh, put that on my list. So definitely check that out. Because I got Crunchyroll, so I'll, I'll be, I'll be uh, locked in. 
Yes, sir. Here's a, a segue back to uh, um, Full Metal um, um, question that was you know brought up. What's some of your favorite moments from SMA Brotherhood? That's a hard question because there's a lot of them. Mm, off rip, if I had to just throw out some, because I'm not going to lie, I love Full Metal. Like, there's a lot. I guess the first one that comes to my mind would be Envy's Execution, mostly just because seeing Roy Mustang rock out, like, no pun intended, but it was really fire to see. Like, I guess another one would have to be Ed's speech. It's kind of underrated, but... It'd be at the end of the Leora arc when he had the speech to, I think her name was Rose, when he told her, like, how can you move forward if you keep regretting the past? To me, that quote really stuck with me for a really, really long time, even to this day. So I'll definitely say that's one of my favorite moments, too. Yeah, that's definitely, like, that was definitely hard as a bitch. Like, and it's crazy because of how good full metal started off just as an anime and then they drop a bomb of a bar like that at the end of basically the first arc like yeah really set the tone going forward but most definitely when it comes to that shit i would say favorite fma moments i would say loki like the whole training with uh uh fuck what's her name you know what the, uh, the teacher? Yeah, the teacher. Izumi? Yeah, Izumi Curtis. Like, that whole that whole shit was amazing to me. Like, just the idea of, like, finding the truth and finding their own truth. Like, yeah. Understand. Like, I feel like that is why we did a, a top 10 list of favorite senseis, and I had her in there. I don't know if she, if she was in the list or an article mention, but she was somewhere in there. And oh, that whole. That that stamped her in, like that was so amazing. She's to definitely me. up there. That was so amazing to me. Like just everything about it, like how beautiful it was, the messages, everything, the character growth, how they were able to relate to each other. It was all flawless in my opinion. I respect the that. Character moment. No, I definitely respect that. Like just in general, that entire flashback was really peak. Especially Edge was, I mean, they were dropping bars on bars mm -hmm. while they were on the island. But let alone Azumi Curtis taking them in when after you could say they didn't have either parent. That was really amazing to see, too. And she raised dogs. Like, she's by default a top tier sensei. So I definitely respect that. Hell yeah. She's basically, she's like, when it comes to female sense, like female characters and even female sensei, she's definitely. Gotta For sure. Because it was more than just teaching them alchemy itself. It was like the truth behind it. And it was deeper than the surface level of alchemy in the show. Mm -hmm. so I thought that was fire. But another moment I would say, uh, Bradley was wilding. Our boy oh, Bradley. Bradley. Yes. Now, Wait. this man <laughs> had a tank bat pedal up a flight of stairs. Yeah. That's got to be one of the coldest shit. Because he can move, but they're not, like, otherworldly moving in full metal. So no. he had a tank backpedal up a flight of stairs. Yep. Yeah. With swords. Yeah. Kind like, of like or I'm not going to lie, that's one of the hardest shits I've ever seen. <laughs> that shit was hard. <laughs> That's got to be one of my favorite moments. My, my my jaw was dropped watching that. He has the ultimate eye. Mm hmm That, the eye, to me, that's like, that's like the signing on on steroids. Yeah. And basically. Another moment with Raph is uh when uh that nigga broke into his house. <laughs> he broke into his house and said, nope, mm -mm, fuck that, and left. Like, I ain't gonna oh, lie. Man. Yeah, greed? greed. When greed broke into his house, like which version of greed? You talk about uh, the original greed or greed? Greed. I think it was the original greed, right? When he broke into his house. Uh, no, nah, it was Greedling who did. It was. Oh, okay. 
He cut gri- the original Greed down, and he cut uh, Great Lane down. He was not playing. He wasn't. He wasn't. Which one was your favorite? Is it just Greedling by default? Both. I'm I'm a big fan of both versions of Greed. Okay. Okay. I am I too. That. If I had to pick one, I'd say Greedling though. Greedling was on. Is Greed your favorite homunculus? My favorite homunculus, uh I would say he's second. My my first is uh Pride. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And what if you had to top it off with three? Um, a third father. Does he count? If does, we're counting, I, 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 I was about to say, does he count? I mean, technically, because he did create, he did create he, them. He, he was the first. Okay, okay. I would say if I had to was, say. You said what? I was gonna say that he he was a he was methodical in in his planning. Yeah, he was he was. Um, which I got which means I gotta get I gotta get the uh how much it was tattooed next because I got like anime tats and all that so I'm I'm all in, bro. Yeah, shit, I'm trying to get like you. Right now I only got the <laughs> shit. I got the full metal logo on my uh, sleeve right here, but. I'm not gonna lie. If I had to say my top three homunculus, I would say Greenling's one. Like the fusion is tough. Greed is already a dog, and Ling is already one of my favorite characters. So them becoming two just kind of just became dope. Uh, if I had to say the other two, I would low key say Envy is my second favorite. Like even though Envy Envy was wildin', Envy was wildin', but the personalities there, like, 100%. definitely. He was definitely, he was definitely wilding. Like, he, he, he was one of the, I would say one of the most despised characters. I was like, I just, I'm like, bro, you, you, you took out, you killed Roy Mustang's best friend in yeah. cold blood, and did not think Roy was gonna come back. Yo, oh, he got his oh, get back. It was get back season for real. Mm-hmm. If I had to say the third one, I would probably say it's tough, but I would probably say Pride just by default. Yeah, Pride like Pride is just a bro. Like my my You're top right. three, I would go Wrath one for obvious reasons. Right. I mean, Jesus Christ, I'm gonna go Pride two. And then I'd probably go Envy 3. Like, I I definitely understand the Envy hate. I definitely get it. But I like I like Village. I, I don't know. I, I, Village is hard, bro. Envy was a loose cannon. Yeah, he was, he was a wild card. For sure. For yeah, sure. Village, for sure. Village. Village are definitely um, intriguing. To me, they're the most... You can throw so much into a villain. Mm-hmm. That's what makes them appealing. Yeah, yeah. Villains is fine. Like, especially if it's a villain done correctly, got all the justice they deserve, mm-hmm. like, when it comes to the writing and everything. Like, uh-huh. love villains. But Like, prime example? Pain. Pain was a... Uh, listen, Pain was that dog. I had to throw that in there. He... He stood on business. You said pain? Pain stood on business. He did. He did. But if you had to ask me who I think the best villain is in Naruto, I think that's Orochimaru. Oh, definitely. Hands down. Okay. Hands down. Hands down. Orochimaru's, okay. Orochimaru is something different. I ain't gonna lie. Like, For sure. Especially when it comes to, because, you know, Naruto being the first anime I ever watched. As an intro to anime villain, for, I mean, I guess you could say Zabuza, kinda, but it was really Orochimaru as the first like main villain. So, like that was my first intro. Like, yo, they're on this type of time, and like they're putting the fear of death into people. Like, yeah, to someone as strong as Kakashi, like that's crazy to me, bro. His theme that. gave me chills growing up. Mm-hmm. But you know who else? Had a sad death. I just want to throw this in here real fast. 
not uh not on me. Oh, oh so yeah. They, they, they made they made yeah. that they they literally went out of their way to make that extra sad. Yeah. Was, uh, I'm a non on me fan, and I'm just like, damn man, he got fried, bro. Hey, at least they gave him a white beard death. I mean, I'm still. I mean, we don't know for sure yet, but. When you look at the other side of the fence, I mean, what was it, Nobara? Like, that was kind of wild. Like, I'm just glad they at least gave Nanami, like, uh, a good send-off. Because I, I was really hoping he wasn't about to go like that to all those curses at the end. Yeah. Oh, you know, he definitely went out like a warrior. For sure, for sure. It was so graphic how they did him, though, at the end. Because he went out like a G, and then his whole upper body got blown off. Yeah. That is crazy. Like, that that's definitely a sad one. But shit, just a segue, you know what I'm saying? I was watching ghost videos on YouTube today, you know what I'm saying? And one thing that made them, like, really entertaining to watch was the suspense like the build up so i started thinking about it to an anime perspective what are some of the most suspenseful scenes in anime mm. you know off rip the very first one that comes to my mind is the one in hunter x hunter when nov was breaking into the castle yeah and yep. Pito was standing guard and he was basically shitting himself like just before that too like Hunter x Hunter does a really good job with the suspense just the scene execution in general but that shit right there like was, I, I was, was low-key like that shit really made you think you were literally in there with him like I'm like yeah, Dad, don't yeah. go up them stairs and the music played <laughs> a really huge part but just all around that was definitely one of them hell yeah it was Shit, another for one. Me, nah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say for me is uh, uh well, the Ratchet A, uh, Shiro from uh, Dead Dead Man Wonderland, when uh, he pulled up to the to the school, and he was just floating outside the window, and she laid waste to the entire class. Like, that was, it was like suspenseful almost after the fact like cause it was like dog what the fuck is going on <laughs> like like it was like my... no go ahead you what? go ahead I was, gonna, I was gonna say my reaction my natural reaction would be like yo what the fuck is this? we need to go there's somebody floating outside yeah and then the, even the, the soundtrack the soundtrack plays a big factor into suspenseful scenes in general, but the soundtrack in that scene is like, yo, like, something's not right here. Like, I don't know exactly what's about to happen, but something is not right here. And then, mm-hmm. boom, she does that. So, but another one, you know what I'm saying, and this is the first one that came to my mind when I think suspense in anime. The Promised Neverland. Oh, you know, The oh, Promised Neverland has a couple of them. The first one is episode one, Connie's Death. Yeah. When they figured, when they saw her in the back of the truck with the rose in her chest, and they were under the wagon, oh, and the, yeah, they crawled under the truck. Oh man, the suspense was intense. Like, you, I'm not sure. Have y'all read the manga? No, no. Are you? Or yeah, just anime only. We're anime only. Yeah. Okay, so I, the the, so I read the manga and I watched season one of the anime. I didn't watch season two because. I was highly upset at how uh, season two was presented because they cut a lot of stuff out that was supposed to be uh, that was in the manga that was supposed to be for season two, and they just changed the whole like narrative around. But um, it gets deeper than that too. Like um, Sister Crone, like the suspense with her, and you know, you were then like, okay, well, what is she? What is she going to do? Like. Is she gonna turn? Is she gonna like you know screw over um um and uh, is it Annabelle? Annabelle? Yeah. Her name. Oh. Are you talking about Annabelle and yeah, yeah, the um the mother. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. Ray. Yeah. She um sister Cone was 
had a um, very intense moment in uh, the Promise of the Land. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, is is Sister Crone the? Uh, is she the black one or no? Nah? Yeah, she's the uh, yeah. black one. Okay, yeah, yeah. Cause I, I I had that on here too. I ain't gonna lie. Like that was one of my two. Like that when she first pulled up to the farm, mm. like every, the way they had to try and continue to act like they didn't know what was going on, but still try to get the kids ready to leave, like. That whole thing, the way she was popping up at every moment, like, what are you guys doing? Like, I it was I was fearful for them. Like, it okay. it was the sense of suspense at every turn. Okay, man, you, she can run. I'm gonna just throw that out there. She can. She, can, <laughs> she was moving. She. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Like, like the pops were crazy too when she would just pop on. Yeah, yeah. But. If I had to say another one, I'd probably say from Saba Odi when Kizaru was going crazy, like, just all around when he reached the Straw Hats, like, I really didn't expect the suspense to go that crazy, but it felt like I was on the edge of my seat, especially by the time Kuma pulled up. It was just straight mayhem. Yeah. Like, Kizaru come pulling up, especially when he actually got to the Straw Hats, like, because... First things first, when he was standing on Zoro and they were trying to get him off and Brooke was stabbing yeah. through him, I'm like, what are they supposed to do? Then Brooke said it in the show. What are we supposed to do? They cut off the background music and it was just Kizaru stepping on Zoro about to kill him and there was nothing anybody could do about it. And then Kizaru, like Robin rolls Zoro out the way. Kizaru shifts over, stomps on him again. And then that is like, now what are we really supposed to do? Like, there is literally nothing anybody can do to save no, Zoro at this moment. Nothing. And, and then, you could say, nah, go ahead. Like, he, when he lift his leg up, they kept on showing all the Straw Hats' reactions to it and everything. And he lift his leg up one more time. And then, like, that whole stretch right there before Rayleigh made that entrance was insane with the suspense. 100%. Because I'm like, is Zoro really? There's no way Zoro dies right here. There's no way. But at the same time, I'm like, how is he not supposed to die right here? That's true. Zoro's a dog, man. I freaking love Zoro. Yeah, I'm right there with you. But yeah, man, um, Zoro's a different a different animal. Uh, yeah, his, his sword style, I think he has one of the best sword styles in this anime, like, period. Like, the master... Three swords, three sword style. That's pretty cool. Oh yeah, that's that's no question. He got the like it's literally the best in my opinion. Like he put a sword in his fucking mouth, and he actually like it's one thing to have a sword in your mouth and it's just kind of there, or maybe you support it with the other two swords or something. Yeah, he literally be cutting shit up with just the sword in his mouth. Like well, every. <laughs> Can't train his jaw with that giant weight. Mm -hmm. That was the craziest shit I ever seen. He was. I know, I've, I've, I've tried to, I've tried to get jiggy with it before, but just the segue. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, like Naruto's amazing, and we mentioned him earlier. Just his death in general, Jiraiya. Like that shit was definitely hard to watch, but. This isn't really necessarily about his death. This is just about the character. He's a goat. He raised goats. I mean, Naruto himself is the goat. So is Minato. But then you look at his other students. Now, in terms of strength and as characters, they're goats. But, I mean, when you want to talk about just in-show, those niggas are villains. So it's like... It's kind of tough. So, there's a famous saying, not necessarily, but usually when a student goes astray, the blame goes to the master. But Payne's case is kind of different, especially just knowing how Jiraiya saved them when they were jits. So, it makes me want to ask you guys, just in general, how much of the blame goes to Jiraiya for Payne's path or Nagato's path? I'm going to keep it a stack. I don't think any of it does. And the reason I say that is because 
Jiraiya didn't have to do what he did in the first place, they would have died. Like, he yeah. saved them, taught them how to defend themselves, and you could say, like, oh, well, if he didn't save them, they wouldn't have done what they did, but what type of logic is that? You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit. and then when that you look shit. at, like, he taught them about peace in the ninja world and everything at a time where their country was getting dog walked in a war that they weren't going to win. Like, so he, yeah, like, I guess you could give him a little bit for leaving in the first place, but if he brought them with him, the Leaf Village would have probably got them killed. So it's like, that, if anything, that right there is tough. like, if anything, the blame goes to him for getting involved with them in the first place. Because that's the only see, place here? I can really see blame coming from. Because, like, they really just took the, the good message that Jiraiya taught them, because we all agree, Peace in the Ninja World is a good thing. And they twisted it their own way when he left. See, Let me ask don't you this get me question. wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm on the same side of the fence as you, but the streets have been talking, and debates could be made. So I just started thinking about it. I mean, you could look at it as, and don't get me wrong, Jiraiya had to take them in. He didn't have to, but he did, and he's a go for it. He raised them, but... You could say he essentially gave them the gun and walked away. Like, I don't know. Um, and here's my other sure. thing. It's like, I feel like you could say it was a gamble. Like, I almost feel like he gambled with his teachings that it would just pay off. Now, I'm not necessarily saying it was a bad gamble, but. Like, I, I yeah, feel that. Like when it retained, with retaining to pain, Uriah, and all of that, do you guys think the mindset that Orochimaru had around that time when they were in the Rain Village, when he told uh, Uriah, we, let's confiscate him, let's, let's confiscate him and get out of here. Do you, do, do you think Orochimaru had the right method of mindset which could have probably prevented ultimately what Ended up taking place, you know, with the legal is getting um, um, ambushed. Or, uh, oh, well, what do you guys, what is our, you know, stance on that? Okay, so that is tough. Off rip, I would say it's not tough. Like, for me personally, as like, I'm on Jariah's side for the sake of, like, for the point of view of taking them in, like, I definitely see why he took them in, but at the same time, like, I think it's kind of a morale thing. Like, Orochimaru, you could say, especially looking at how things turned out, he may have been right, especially because they didn't know much about the Renegon, but they seen he had it. So, like, you could say they were maybe playing with fire that they didn't really understand at the time, but... At the same time, it's like, I guess it goes right back to who Jiraiya is. I'm not sure if that was his first rodeo teaching. I don't know if he taught them before Minato or after. But I guess he, I don't know, that's tough for me. But I would say, for the most part, I don't think Orochimaru was necessarily wrong. I just don't agree with it. I'm Even right there, yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Like, I, he in the long run, he was right because the village wouldn't have got destroyed. But I don't agree with like, you know, what I'm saying like if they, if he brought them back, like let's say he brought them back to the Leaf Village, if the Leaf Village elders say they see that he got the Renegon in his eyes, they're off yeah. him. Like they're they're dead. So it's like Jiraiya being who he is, I'm not gonna get these kids killed. In fact, he literally did the opposite and kept them alive and taught them how to stay alive. So it's like, it's tough. Like, I definitely get the other side of the argument. Because at the end of the day, just as you said, it's kind of like they put the gun in their hand and walked away. But at the same time, it's like, Jiraiya is a stand-up guy. Like, you're not going to see these orphan kids in a war you don't really even want to fight and just let them die if you're Jiraiya. Like, that's just not, yeah. it's not who he is. He's not going to do that. And he, he made the ethical decision to 
raised them to where they can defend themselves, and then he got he got the fuck. He went back to his people. Like at the end of the day, he left them with the right messages, the tools to defend themselves, and he went back to what he got to do. Do we remember what age he left them? Or like I just like. Yeah. Who the kid? Who the them or or to a hit me? Just on the, um, nah, Nagato, Yahiko, and Conan. When he like were they the, teens uh, yet, or were they more on like pre-time skip Naruto's age side? I'm pretty sure they were pre-time skip Naruto's age. Like they were like a little older, like how uh, Neji and them were. I think they were. Do like you guys think Jiraiya should have stayed a little bit longer before he left? That I think he should have, but I don't know if he could have. Just yeah, because I... it was it was wartime, like. Yeah. Okay. I think he should have stayed longer, but I don't know if he just could have stayed however long he wanted to. What? Which, although at the same time, he was with them for a long ass time. Yeah, it had to be like what a year, maybe, maybe. At... I think so. Two days. It, it was a while. It was a while. Well, I will say when it when it pertains to the Renegon, um, uh, something that you had brought brought up, um, looking back at it, I don't necessarily think the council would have off uh, Nagato because I think they would have treated him like Kokina. Ah. Uh. That's I don't know. interesting. It is interesting, but the reason why I was so quick to come to that conclusion is because it was wartime, and they're literally enemy children. And as enemy children in this war, you're seeing people with Leaf Village headbands smoking your whole family and all your friends. So it's like... I mean, I mean you could technically say the same thing for the Whirlpool Village. That was a whole other village in the end of itself. Yes, they were partners with, uh, you know, because of Hajirama, but that was a whole different nation. And I think in, in looking at it in the context of war, yeah, this is an enemy, but this enemy can also be an asset. Maybe we can utilize... You think they would have tried to use them like the Jinjuriki? Yes. I definitely think they would have uh, did that. I can see... Yeah. Line, probably would have been... I could see either that, or I could I could low key see them low key experimenting on that nigga, like especially if someone like Donzo on some grimy shit, like at least trying to learn more about how the eyes work. I can see that, especially Donzo, just knowing how he how he operates. Also, by the way, I have to say Donzo, when you look at his ideals, just as being a, a ninja, he follows textbook one hundred one. Yeah, yeah. I can Loki, you you could say he's the black bearer of Naruto. Yeah. Like he's the realest thing to a ninja. Donzo Loki actually deserves the hate he get though. Blackbeard doesn't, but that's a whole nother discussion. But yeah. he's definitely yeah. the black beard of Naruto. But that's tough though, because like, it's like let's say they did like experiment on Nagato and them, like, is that a good thing for them? You know what I'm saying? No. Like, it's not a good thing. So it's like there's no real. There's no telling what they would have done with them if they brought them to the Leaf Village, especially at that time with that type of power. When you say experiment, are you referring it to like to them, like sticking tubes in him, or are you talking about let's send him out and experiment to see what his abilities can, what he can do with his eyes, type of experiment? Yeah. I think it works more. Kind of more on the tube side, like, kind of reminiscing, like, kind of how they treated Yamato, kind of similar to that. Like, I could see them using someone, especially at that time, I could see them having a Rochimaru experiment on them. That's probably why Rochimaru wanted to take them and do. <laughs> I low-key wonder, maybe, should Jiraiya have took them out of the Hidden Rain when he left them? I think he should put them somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Like, even if you don't bring him back to the Leaf, and it's tough because it was the Great Shinobi War, not the Great Leaf versus Rain War. So it's like, there's only so many places you could put him. But I guess you could say, like, even with the right teachings, like, they ended up as a product of the environment. 
Yeah. To you an know, extent. That's, that's, Cause I feel like, like the way that the way that Naruto's world is, like, I don't, I feel like it wouldn't have necessarily mattered where they were at. Cause like it was the Great Shinobi War, and then there's also random ass bandits and shit. Like, there's a lot of woods and random forests in Naruto that you can run into a nigga in somehow, some way. With all that wilderness, you're running into somebody. The way that yeah. Naruto's set up, so it's like I don't necessarily know if the location would have mattered per se see for me i think the temperature of the hidden rain might be on the more downside compared to the other villages like okay. on the inside type shit okay i can see that yeah that is interesting well, yeah, though. plus we got hanzo you know who was the ruler at that time too mm-hmm. he gets slept on a lot hanzo is quite strong it was just you know he met the wrong person yeah. But he was everywhere. But overall, like, if you want to give Jiraiya a little bit of blame, it's just min- it's minuscule, like very small. Because as a teacher, he basically did all of the right things. Like he yeah. didn't tell them go get your revenge or no crazy shit. He taught them. He told them about bringing peace to the ninja world in a time where there was complete chaos and war and took in these orphans and taught them how to take care of themselves, take care of your brothers and sisters. There is not a but, damn thing wrong with that. Yeah, but and no, you, know, you know, you're right. And at the end of the day, Nagato is an antagonist, not in the villain. If it was the other way around, you could say that'd be more blame to Jiraiya. Yeah, exactly. Like, if he was a dead-ass villain villain, like, I just want my get-back type shit, that's a whole different story, but... Yeah, he could have been a whole-ass Sasuke. That would have been a problem. That would have been a problem. And he still murked off the entirety of the fucking Leaf Village for the sake of Ninja Peace, but still, like, at the end of the day, he was an antagonist. Mm-hmm. But here's a, here's a flaw. This is where I like to, I like to point, point out the flaws of, like, a lot of these characters. Here's the flaw in Darius' thinking. And it's the same flaw. It was the same flaw in Haruza's thinking. And it's the same flaw in Naruto's thing. Peace do not last forever. That's the greatest, that's the flaw in, in their way of thinking. There's going to always be somebody in the shadows building an army to start an uproar. That, that frame of thinking, like, it's, uh, how that, what's the best analogy I can use? It's like Dr. King and Malcolm X. They, both great, great, great mindsets, and, you know, they both had their ideals. But, and they both, I'll say they both have their flaws, in a sense. Yeah. Dr. King's, his flaw in his way of thinking is, you know, you know, kumbaya, ah, well, you know, in today's time, you know, everybody, I'm not kumbaya, it's still war and conflict out here. So it's, that that way of thinking that, like, Dariah and other characters have, it, it's great, and we need a mindset like that, and I'm glad these characters are written like that, but there's also a flaw with it within that frame of thinking because you know there's gonna always be some form of trouble. always uh, like bro look at look at Boruto right now like Boruto at the end of Naruto Shippuden Naruto literally brought peace to the ninja world there was nothing left that was that was one yeah. of the biggest flaws going into Boruto it's like who are you gonna fight there's still people lurking in the shadows that want that smoke so it's like regardless of how much peace you bring to the world there's always going to be somebody that wants something or to do something or take over something. Yeah. Well, well here's the thing with Naruto. Well, here's a flaw with that, with Naruto. Because um, there's a... Um, in one of the novels, like, I learned that, like, the Rain Village, you know, you would think, you would think by now, like, the Rain Village is repaired and, you know, it's peaceful. It ain't like that. They're still struggling. That's that world building. Like... I wish it, I, I just wish a lot of the villagers got flushed out more more into it. But the fact that they're struggling speaks volumes. I mean, it low key makes me really think too, because you look at Minato, you look at Naruto. Them growing up in the leaf probably played a huge factor, like to why it didn't matter what kind of training they got from Jiraiya. Like, 
I almost wonder if the kind of training Jiraiya tried on them just wasn't the right kind. It could be. It could be. Because just as you said, like, uh, Hanzo was the leader. So it was like, how he was, we don't really know too, too much about how he was, but the the Hidden Rain was not run like the Hidden Leaf in the slightest. So Not like, even close. Not even That's close. That's why I go right back to the temperature of the two villages. Yeah. Like, damn, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Like, it was a completely different atmosphere just in general, just living there. So it's like, yeah. you can only imagine trying to teach somebody like that and about this peace and everything. Like, maybe it could have been in the sense of where that's not even something that y Nagato, Yagiko, and Konan could have truly comprehended at that age. And I don't remember, but did Jiraiya ever really tap into their hatred? Or to Nagato's deep hatred from when he saw his parents get murked? I don't recommend. Recommend. I don't recall. Um, I think he was. If I remember correctly, I think he was really only preaching peace, like peace to him. I don't really know if he dove into, Obi, you know, oh, uh, uh, not Obi, uh, not like those like hatred. But you know, see, as a simple, and that kind of like, even though it was a little bit different, it kind of reminds me of Kakashi and Sasuke. Yeah. Just a little bit in the uh, sense of like. Kakashi had a uh, entire or Sasuke when you look at his entire character I feel like Kakashi tried one lane teaching with him Yeah, like only his method like I feel like Jiraiya may have did the same thing with Nagato where it could have been wrong Just looking at the type of character. He is like maybe you needed more type of ways. I think he and did. That's tough. Like that's tough to fault him for it, but I think that's where it may have went wrong. Like, I, yeah, I, I think that's 100% accurate. And I think the difference between Jiraiya and Kakashi is for Kakashi, Sasuke was literally assigned to him because yeah. of how all the trauma and things that they went through and all of that. And you watch him and you have the Sharingan and all of that. He was assigned directly to Kakashi, whereas Jiraiya did this out of the goodness of his heart. Like, he, yeah, he had yeah. no true attachment to these kids. He just did it because he's a good person. I wonder if he even really knew about the backstory like that. I doubt he did. It was probably one of those situations where he was like, these kids, you know, they're in a messed up situation. They, mm -hmm. need, a, they need a parent figure. I'm going to be that parent figure to them. So that's the way I, I, uh, I can best I can sum it up. Shit. Well, what does it matter to yeah, because you could say, like, if Jiraiya didn't do that, they would have dead ass been villains. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Let me ask you this question. Take out Jiraiya. And I'm going to just go through each, each of them. What if Orochimaru was put in that position? Now, obviously, but this is before he was, like, you know, doing all the crazy, crazy stuff that, you know, we've, we've seen him do throughout well, the years of watching Naruto. But. How do you think the uh, psychological mindset of Rochimaru would fit in that dynamic? Because th again, this this guy lost his uh lost his parents. You know, he he went through that same trauma. But how, how do you think? Do you think he would be able to mess well, or should I say, better with them because he went through that experience and he he know he, he's uh become I guess you could say in tune with like. Life and death. I don't know how. How would y'all think him being in the higher position? Low key raising them. Just for those two, like, like it's interesting because Orochimaru is on the darker side, and I just kind of think back to who got which students between him and Jiraiya. Jiraiya got the Sun student Naruto, and Orochimaru got the Moon. So you look at Nagato and his backstory, his upbringings, and just someone of that nature, it already kind of fits Orochimaru's background. Now, here's where I think it gets really interesting. Like, I think Orochimaru, now I don't, I feel like Nagato, if he trained with Orochimaru, 
he would have been a little bit more closer to how Kabuto turned out rather than how Sasuke ended up turning out. Like, I don't think he would have tried to necessarily offer Rochimaru. Mm. See, the way I'm looking at it is like they have that type of shared experience with each other in the sense of loss and everything like that. But when I look at Orochimaru, especially like even at this time, Orochimaru was still on that quest for power, even way back at that point. And Orochimaru is not exactly a caring, loving person. He so would turn like, him into a tool. He would be a tool for sure. You you fuck around and see Orochimaru pop out with the Renegon. Was it the quest for power or was it the quest to uh, discover immortality? Because you gotta remember that was his initial that was his initial goal before he became obsessed with power. He wanted to figure out um, the concept of life and death, and you know, and basically how to live forever. What can I do to live forever? That was his, his initial goal. Before I need power, I need this, I need that. But even with that, it's like he was so stuck on that quest for immortality that it's like even at that point, it's like everything he did was it wasn't like Orochimaru's the type of guy to dive into your psychological problems and like he wasn't that type of character. So it's yeah. like I feel like, and that's going back to the other question about what Orochimaru wanted to do with them when they found him. Like he has the Renegon, let's take him back. Like. He probably would have tried to do something with the Renegon. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I think if he if he saved them, I think it will be a, a, a Kimi Maru role. I think Nagato will be unblind, unblind loyal to a Roshi Mark. I do too. If I do too. But I yeah. think that would have been a problem. See, I mean, my thing is where does that leave Yahiko and Conan? Because they weren't necessarily special. Maybe Orochimaru would take all three in, but that's where it gets tough because he's very selective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is very true. He, he, he see Nagato like, hmm, yeah, come on with me, young one. Uh, and, you know, I guess you say get... He wouldn't mind the other two. Yeah. Like you said, he is a bit... Um, but again, Orochimo is a fascinating character because I, I go back. I'm gonna go back to King Mo, that that uh point because even when he when he met King Mo in the Mystery League, Orochimo we can we, we can he didn't care, but he showed up in, in a weird sense. He cared, at least to me, um, about King Mo. King Mo, no matter what his like agenda was, like mm, I can use you as my vessel. I think he genuinely cared about King Maru in some weird way. That's true, but that. even like going back to that that vessel word, like that's going that it ties back to his quest for immortality and everything. He's like, it's almost like I don't want my vessel to get offed. Like, I want you to be as strong as you can possibly be. So when I take over, I am I'm gonna be as strong as you were. You know what I'm saying? Like. I don't know if necessarily like it's the same type of caring that they would have needed. I could see that, but here's well, the question: if they, if they, go ahead. No, nah, nah, what were you about to say? I was gonna say real fast: if is it really like when looking at things and looking how like Kimimaro was okay with being the chosen one for Orochimaru? Is that was that really evil? Because at this point, he essentially said, "Yes, I will be your vessel." He he didn't he could have, he could have said, "No, nah, fam, I'm not on that." But he willingly accepted to be the same vessel before he got sick. So is it is it really evil when you accept when you ex, when you when you accept that role? Like, yes, I am building myself up for Lord of the Rings. It okay. Um, it's it's still evil, but it, they're just a weirdo for except. Like it's still evil. Like you know yeah, what I'm I saying. Think, like I, you're still taking over somebody's body. I think it's evil, and like for me, I see. Like I wonder was Kimi Maru's situation similar with Zabuza and Haku, where Haku didn't really have a choice but to accept it with Zabuza, 
but the nigga was using him as a tool. Now, it wasn't trying to be a vessel, but you consider the intentions like it wasn't really nice what he was trying to do with it. But you could say Zabuza kind of cared for Haku the same way Orochimaru kind of cared for Kimimaru in a weird way. Because he, he could have left, he could have left him for dead. Let's be honest, he literally could have left him for dead. Yeah. And said no, but he he chose to take this kid in, and and no matter like really how warped the Orochimaru's brain can get, I I think in a weird way he I think he had a soft spot. Yeah. In a weird way. But he wouldn't necessarily show it because of how, you know, how wacky he can be. But, yeah. but okay, but even in that caring sense, like, looking back at Nagato and Yahiko and Konan, like, especially going back to what you just said, like, he wouldn't have shown it. So, I doubt Orochimaru's diving into those problems that like the psychological thing with the parents getting killed and everything like that. I don't think Orochimaru is going into any of that. So it's like, at that point, it's like, would that really have been better for them? I don't Orochi, think, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, for the sake of being a sensei, I don't think he would have been a good sensei for the sake of raising them. But for the sake of using them, I think he would have been good. Like, I think he would have definitely got the power that yeah, they got. Yeah, yeah. But when you want to talk about the character, I don't think he could have gave them the character that Jiraiya did. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there. I can agree with that. I can definitely agree, agree with you guys when it comes to, like, because Jiraiya did have character. But, see, that's, that's the thing with Jiraiya, though. Like, even with his training with Naruto, like, when I really go back and look at the training, you know, all he really taught, he didn't really, like, teach him, teach him anything besides, you know, mainly the focus, you know, the whole Naruto situation. I think when it came, when it came to us, maybe from a moral standpoint, he mm-hmm. taught Naruto a lot of stuff. But when it comes to teachers, I think Orochimaru is one of the best teachers, or probably the best teacher out of the three, because he taught, he taught, like, he said, here's Sasuke, it's time to train. Here's some people for you. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you a couple of these methods. Oh, I'm gonna take you out so you can go, you know, battle an army. He he was uh he did things with uh Sasuke like he taught him. Whereas I don't necessarily like looking back at like just Naruto's training. I don't think he taught him because at the end of the day, Naruto ended up learning a lot more stuff after Jiraiya's passing. But I think just from from a moral from a moral standpoint and being a man. He taught Naruto that very well because he shaped them. Even did Naruto do? Yeah, yeah. From a moral standpoint, being a man, I give him that. But from a teaching him techniques perspective, I don't think he did much of that. Um, if we're saying, Naruto learned a lot of that. If we're saying from a technique standpoint, with just the Sonnies and their uh, three students from seven, I would low key say Tsunade may low key be the one who taught the most to her student, like. I don't I, I don't think much of Sakura's bag, but at the same time, Sakura's bag is damn near identical to Tsunade's. Like she basically poured her entirety into Sakura. And yeah. it's not just Sakura. She did this or she at least gave Eno or not Eno, ten ten some, yeah. Okay, but see like if we're talking about how they taught Team Seven, I'm right there with you. When it comes to Orochimaru, like, power-wise, it's like, you know what I'm saying? He's better in terms of teaching actual skills and things of that nature. Or you could say Tsunade is the best. But when we're talking about all the students... Oh, if it's in general, it's Jiraiya. By it's Jiraiya by, by default. It's Jiraiya by mom. Just because he has so many. He got so many of them. Like, I mean, are we going... Cause, I mean, what did he really teach Naruto though? Like I was like, outside of the, the, the what the big ball I seen on, like Naruto still had Naruto problems. Even for still. me, for me it's kind of more of the mental aspect. Like it's kind of the same with Yusuke and Genkai. Like Genkai really didn't teach Yusuke shit aside from the spirit gun and like 
maybe a few other things, but she damn near shaped them into a man in the span of a few like training arcs, I guess. Like with Jiraiya, I think those two years, just seeing how Naruto was at the end to who he was in Shippuden, I feel like that's Jiraiya right there, not necessarily his arsenal. Yeah, like. Oh yeah, no, definitely. I definitely agree with you guys when it comes to that. Jiraiya, like, I give him like he 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 was a great father figure for Naruto. And I think that's what Naruto needed, and I think that's what Naruto looked at the most. Honestly. Yeah. But just to segue a bit, I'm not gonna lie. Naruto is peak. Naruto is peak. I mean, we kind of brought up one of the scenes from it, from the bridge builder arc, one of my favorite personal arcs. But just to spin back to it, you know, the Zabuza arc was really fantastic. Like. Everything about it was really amazing, especially Haku's death. But not just Haku's death or Zabuza rocking out. To me, one of the sleeper moments that, and especially Z- Naruto stabbing Zabuza, that was also amazing with his words. Yeah. But when you want to talk about one of the sleeper moments, for me, one of the sleeper moments from that arc was when Sasuke shielded Naruto from Haku's attack. Like, it gets overlooked just because of all the amazing things that happened in Naruto following and Shippuden. But to me, that's really amazing just because who Sasuke is. He's not really someone who was showing his emotions at the time. But to me, that was more than just the save. To me, that was also one of the greatest love letters in anime. Just him rocking out, really, with his body rather than his words. Like... Just keeping that same aspect, what are some of the best love letters in anime? Hmm. Off rip, if I had to say another one, moving on to the other one in the big three, I would have to say when Ace sacrificed himself for Luffy. Like, of course, that is his brother, but at the same time, that was one of the biggest I love you's to Luffy's. Like, just watching him do what he did, like, Shouldn't have been in that situation. He should have ran. He shouldn't have fought Akinu. But after he got in that situation, it got sticky. And he did what he did. And it was definitely one of the best love letters. Yeah. Yeah, it was for sure. Like, I ain't gonna lie. One Piece got a lot. One Piece got mm-hmm. definitely. Like, another one, I would say, uh, Jean Bay, Martin Luther Jean Bay giving blood. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good one. Well, you want to talk about a love letter? I mean, they literally like it was literally like the niggas were they they were racist. They were racist. Like, and Martin Luther Jean Bay to put a stop to that. It doesn't matter if you're a fish man or a or a human or a pirate or whatever. Like, we're 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 just all we're just all here, bro. We're just all beings. Like, yeah. I'm like he was the one person that stepped up to give Luffy his blood. You know what I'm saying? That's definitely another one for sure. For me, yeah. it's when uh, Zoro, for me, it's when Zoro took in Luffy's team. One Piece yeah. loaded. What the fuck? Exactly. Exactly. Yup. I'm not gonna lie, Loki. I was thinking that one too. That one was a really amazing love letter. Like just watching him, and it's like it's really sleeper, especially for when you want to talk about it in that aspect, love letter. But I think Zoro is kind of like Sasuke to where he doesn't show that kind of emotions. He's more of an action guy, not really a word kind of guy. But him doing that for Luffy definitely was the biggest I love you to my captain ever. Hell yeah. You know another one? Uh, when Biafia saved Rukia. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Hold on, let me let me reach into my bag. I'm tweaking right now. Yeah, that's that's a good one right there. Mm-hmm. Given all the like everything that happened between those two and just how Biafia, in a weird sense, he was trying to protect his sister, but he did it in such a cold way. Yeah. But all all for the sake. No, 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 no! I'm sorry. Take that back. Because 
um, he viewed it like you you betrayed the social society. You well now you are being you know for this. So after he took that elder, you know, you know Ichigo, and just to see him, you know his his gear shift to ultimately come save his sister, amazing. It amazing. Flawless chef's kiss. Yeah. Shit. Another uh, one. I would have to say from Naruto when Minato and Kushina sacrificed themselves for Naruto and died to Kuruma's hand. Like, it, they are the parents, but at the same time, that was one of the greatest parting away, well, saddest, but also one of the greatest love letters in anime, too. Hell yeah. Quite literally, like... I mean, yeah, that, yeah, that nigga was talking to Kuruma and literally got to talk to his parents in there. So, essentially, it was quite literally a love letter. Yeah, he sealed it up with him. Yeah. Uh, literally. Another one in Naruto is uh, Obito giving Kakashi the second Sharingan. Oh, yeah. Like, that, was, that was great. Especially, like, right... Sleeper. Like, right after they had that amazing fight amazing fight going flashing back to their past and everything then you got this whole uh it was a lot of crazy dumb shit that happened at the end of the shipping but like that was one of the the better moments aside from the action at the end of shipping for sure okay when it comes to now uh Quite a few, but this one in particular is key because it all, everything came full circle, and I know, I know he looking down, and he was very proud. When Orochimo pulled up, and he, he kicked his side, he, re- he, he re- reunited with his, with one of his best friends, and he reunited with their teacher. Great moment. I ain't gonna lie, the whole big three, yeah. the whole big three got a lot. We gonna be here for a minute. It does. <laughs> Cause I just thought of another one. <laughs> well, I did. Well, this one is outside of the big three, but to me, it's it's big in my heart. But it's from Full Metal, actually. I would say when Ed sacrificed or really gave his leg for Ed or for Al. Yeah, yeah. That's I ain't gonna lie. That's probably the best one, low key. Like. It's up there. He g- he gave a like he gave an arm for his mama. It went south. Gave a leg for his brother. It doesn't yeah. get much deeper than that. Like he he literally went an arm. He he literally gave an arm and a leg for these niggas. Yeah, literally. But jumping back to Naruto, you know what I'm saying? At the end of Itachi and Sasuke's fight, when Ooh. he did the little two finger tap and oh. put the Amaterasu in his eye. Mm-hmm. Like, that's another one that went full circle because when we seen, especially when we seen the flashback of when they were younger and everything, and he kept on doing that, and he finally did it at the end of that fight, and uh, Obito revealed to him, or Toby revealed to him that uh, Itachi always loved you, and he put this Amaterasu in your eyes just to protect you from me. Like, that was definitely one of the craziest love letters and reveals in Naruto. Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. Yeah, the big three is loaded today. I agree. It is loaded. Shit, well. Um, man. Oh. Uh. Man, it's a lot. It's a lot. Oh, my goodness. It's a lot running through my head right now. Uh, another love letter moment. It, it is also from Full Metal. Um, was when um, Alex and Olivia came together and fought. Uh, and fought. Uh, the Hamas. Sloth. 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 Yeah. 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 Like, it was just nice to see them banging out together too, especially just because Olivia and Major Armstrong too. I mean, he's literally a tank, but. Olivier was really like she's just in general one of the dopest females in that show. So 
seeing her fight alongside her brother was just really nice to see. Hell yeah. Especially, I didn't know if they were ever going to actually, like, meet in the show. Like, I didn't think we would yeah. actually get to see that in general, them fighting together. And see, the thing about that, too, is he didn't respect them at, the, at mm. that time throughout Full Metal. So the fact that, you know, they fought together and he got to see her little brother do, do his thing, too. Yeah. He respected her game. She respected like, his I game. Know. I wasn't familiar with your game. Mm. Olivier is definitely her too, like she okay, she's okay. her. But I think she's a doctor. She's gotta throw that in. I think she's into that. You said she's what? I think she's a dominatrix. So oh, throw that in. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the, the, you know what I'm saying? Hands up! I don't, I don't yeah. know. She gives me alpha, alpha uh, mentality vibes. Probably low key, probably because she got an attitude like a motherfucker. But she's definitely oh. her, for real. Uh, look, oh, this was a great moment. Um, this is from Demon Slayer. Us, uh, uh Rengoku, Rengoku. I think it's his name. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. When he went out in the movie, that was a that was a amazing mm. moment. It was a very very amazing moment, and truth be told, it was the highlight. In my opinion, it was the highlight peak moment of Demon Slayer. Yeah. And I still think Demon Slayer is in his prime, but I personally think that was Demon Slayer's peak moment. It's a lot of peak of Demon Slayer. Holy. There uh, another is. another love letter in Demon Slayer is from episode one when Nezuko was turned into a demon and uh, Giyu pulled up and he was about to slime Nezuko and Tanjiro jumped in the way and he made him uh, instead of cutting her down he just cut off a little bit of his hair mm-hmm. and then he went to those lengths just to not get her slimed even though she was a demon already and then on top of that Nezuko responded to it even though she was a demon, she was like, or not responded to it. This was before Giyu pulled up. But when she was attacking him and then she started crying, like she was still in there. Yeah. I thought that was definitely a love letter. Yeah, it was. Uh, it well, was. Another one uh, from Yu-Gi-Oh! When it was Yu-Gi versus uh, Atem. The, the, fi- the final battle. That was a love letter moment. Just to see everything come full circle from where they were, where uh, Yugi and Yami were a duo to, to uh, where they became opponents for each other. I definitely feel that and respect that. But all in all, just in general, let us know some of your favorite love letter moments in anime or vice versa, just any of the other topics that we talked about. Let us know how you're feeling on all of them. Hell yeah, hell yeah. There's a lot that we covered in this video, so let us know what you thought about everything. You feel me? And vice versa, if there's anything you want to see us cover, you know what I'm saying, drop it in the comments. Let us know, because we like to address the street talk. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And once again, shout out to you, Soul King, for joining us. Uh, thank you, thank you guys, man, for uh, you know bringing me on, man. I uh, definitely appreciate it. Uh, appreciate the love. Like this is what we need in uh in the anime community. Um, twenty twenty four. Yes, um, sir. Forward, you know, it's you know it's about it's about building and uplifting versus divide versus division. Um, and that's where I uh, that's just the type of fre- uh, frequency I'm on uh, this year. Yes, sir. 100%. I'm right there with you. Hell yeah. Hey, Amen. With that being said, if you enjoyed this video and you made it to the end, because wow, it's a long one. If you made it to the end, make sure you hit that like button. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you hit that bigger subscribe button as well if you haven't already. And turn on that post notification bell so you don't miss the next Talk of Tokyo podcast or yes, any of our yes. other videos. We draw straight bangers on this channel, all anime related. You know what I'm saying? So, if you're an anime fan, make sure you tap in with us. With that being said, make sure you guys click on our description. There will be three links waiting for you. You know what I'm saying? One will take you 
to all of our socials, South of Tokyo on every platform. Yes, the sir, other yes, one sir. will take you to our Discord. Make sure you guys join. Come on, in. Come on in. You know what I'm saying? Join that Discord. Come vibe oh. out with us. Talk about anything, anime, not anime. It don't matter. You feel me? And last but certainly not least, the third link will take you to our good man, Anime Soul King's social. Yes, sir. You feel me? Make sure you guys follow him on everything. Right. You feel me? As you can wow. clearly see, lit vibes. He got the lit content. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you chat in. But, uh, oh, yeah, you can find me just about everywhere Instagram, uh, uh, Twitter X, um, Facebook, TikTok. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, man, find me everywhere. Uh, yeah, man, again, I greatly appreciate um, you guys for having me on. And, uh, I will say this um, on Sundays, me and my, um, my buddies are will be dropping our podcast, uh, Sipping Chill Hot Shots. Yes, in because we talk about music. Oh man, if you hip hop fans, come on in. You know, because we're having a whole round table of debates of top five, top ten. Who's in my work for? All that. So definitely, you know, check us out. Yes, hey, sir. we're definitely gonna tune in. Yes, sir. But hey, man. With that being said, S O T out. Later. <laughs>